Praise be to Jesus. How are you, my dear children? Hope you are all doing good by God's grace. Today we are going to start our lesson six: Church, the priestly people. Before we start with the lesson, let's say a small prayer. Let us all rise, join our hands, and close our eyes. Almighty Father, we praise you, we worship you, we give you thanks. Lord Jesus, we seek your guidance as we begin with this class. Holy Spirit, shower on us the gifts of knowledge and wisdom. Mother Mary, pray for us to your Son Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's begin lesson six, church. priestly people so we saw in the old testament how god chooses his own people and chooses leaders to liberate his people that is the israelites from the slavery of egypt we saw how he took them through all the sufferings through the red sea and he was always there with them during the day he was there with them as pillar of cloud and night as a pillar of fire and as he takes his own people to the promised land he also chooses one more person to sanctify his people he chooses aaron and his sons so that he can sanctify his people and make them acceptable to god so god orders moses to anoint aaron and his son as priests So Moses calls Aaron and his sons, washes them with water, put on them with coat, girded them with the girdle, and then anoint them and consecrate them. This episode of anointing Aaron and his sons as priests is the beginning of Israel's history of priesthood. Now, what were the functions of these priests? Why were they were anointed? totally dedicated at the service of god and they need to had certain kind of qualities what were the qualities so the priests were supposed to be holy they were supposed to be blameless and they shouldn't have any sin in their life so that is why god chose aaron and his son so that they can dedicate their life at the service of the lord now what were the functions of the priest they were the mediator between god's people and god they were supposed to offer sacrifices gifts and incenses in the name of the people and they had also the responsibility of teaching god's people about god's will for them now in this lesson we have six, six topics to deal with let's see what are the topics number 1 israel a priestly people number 2 the priesthood of the old testament and the priesthood of jesus number 3 the priesthood of jesus christ number 4 we are a priestly people number 5 the holy kurbana the noblest of all worships and number 6 the ministerial priesthood now let's try to learn point 1 israel a priestly people now if you remember in lesson 1 we had learned two words two special words the word kahal and ecclesia i hope all of you remember that what was the meaning of those two words kahal in hebrew and ecclesia in greek so we learned that these words meant that a community of people called together by god and when we take into consideration the history of israel and israel's liberation from egypt these words have three significant meanings what are they can you recollect we had learned that in lesson 1 
Maybe you can check your textbooks, go back to lesson one and try to read what is the three meanings of the words kahal and ecclesia. The first meaning of kahal and ecclesia in the context of Israel's liberation from Egypt is that Israel constitute an assembly of people called by God. Is it not? Who called the people of Israel? It was God who called them. What was the second meaning? Very important meaning. What was the second meaning? The second meaning was that God called them for a special purpose. Is it not? And what was that special purpose? Just read the text. It says the special purpose was God called them to offer him worship and keep his covenant. Is it not? And then we have the third meaning. What is that? Through this election, the people of Israel become God's own people. Now, in the context of lesson number six, we need to concentrate on the second meaning of the word kahal and ecclesia. What was that meaning? It is the purpose for which God liberated Israel or the purpose for which God called his people and took them to the promised land. What was the purpose? The purpose was to worship him and to keep his covenant. Correct? So, if he wanted his people to worship him, he wanted priests who are dedicated to this purpose and mission. In the book of Exodus, God says, Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So God tells us, God tells us that we shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So we can see that from the Old Testament itself, God wanted his people to be a priestly people. And therefore, he chose leaders among his people. So God chose Aaron and his sons to offer sacrifice to God on behalf of his people so that his people can be sanctified and become acceptable to God. Now, let's see point number two, the priesthood of the whole Old Testament and the priesthood of Jesus. Now, throughout the Old Testament, we see Aaron and his sons and their descendants. Throughout the Old Testament, we see Aaron, his sons and his descendants doing the priestly service for the Lord. And it continued till Jesus Christ. But there was something incomplete about this priesthood. And that is what we are going to see in this point number two, the priesthood of Old Testament and priesthood of Jesus. So what was that was incomplete in the priesthood of Aaron and his descendants? So till Jesus Christ, the sacrifices that were made were of goats or calves or the harvest of the farmers, etc. So all these sacrifices were made, numerous number of sacrifices. Every day the priest used to stand at the altar and make all these sacrifices, pray for the people of God, offer gifts to God. All these things were done, but it was not complete. What was missing? Well, what was missing was the forgiveness of the sins. All the sacrifices that were offered till Jesus didn't guarantee the forgiveness of sin. The sins were not forgiven. And that was the incompleteness that was there in all those offerings or worships offered by the priest till Jesus Christ. Now, after Jesus Christ, everything changed. Jesus had told that people will start worshipping in spirit and truth. And what was that spirit and truth? 
he actually meant that he is going to offer the ultimate sacrifice, the eternal sacrifice. And what was that eternal sacrifice? It was his life on the cross. And through the sacrifice of his own life on the cross, Jesus completely changed the concept of worship. The sacrifice that Jesus had given on the cross was the eternal sacrifice. And through this eternal sacrifice on the cross, Jesus became the eternal high priest. The sacrifice that Jesus gave on the cross washed away all our sins, which was not happening in the Old Testament sacrifices that were made by the priests, by Aaron and his descendants. So now let's see the third point, the priesthood of Jesus Christ. So we saw that as Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross, he washed away all the sins of his people. Okay, But Jesus was not born in the tribe of Levi. He was not born in the tribe of priestly people. He was born in the tribe of kingly people. Judea, right? We know that Jesus is a descendant of King David. So he was not a priest by birth, but Jesus was priest because he is the son of God. And that makes him the eternal high priest. Because, please remember the point, Jesus was a priest because he is the son of God. And he became the eternal priest eternal high priest by sacrificing his life on the cross. Okay, So you need to remember this, very important. How did Jesus Christ become eternal high priest? By sacrificing his life on the cross for our own sins, is it not? He gave ransom for our sins. Now we also take part in this sacrifice, is it not? Every holy mass or every holy Eucharist Holy Kurbana that we attend in the church. What we are doing? We are actually taking part in the eternal sacrifice of Jesus. The priest standing at the altar is representing Jesus Christ and he is offering the same sacrifice that was offered by Jesus on the cross. So we are also participants in this sacrifice and through this participation in the eternal sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are also becoming a priestly people. Okay? God wants us to be priestly people and we become priestly people through the participation in the eternal sacrifice in Holy Eucharist. Now, what happens when we take part in the Holy Eucharist? How do you feel after you come out every Sunday, come out of the church after attending the Holy Mass? Don't you feel lightened? You feel you have lost a lot of weight, right? Why is that so? Because once we participate in the Holy Eucharist, which is the eternal sacrifice offered by Jesus, we are washed away of our sins. We became redeemed from our sins, is it not? So we are shedding away all our weight because of the sins in us. And we became acceptable in the front of God. We become holy and we are sanctified through the various sacraments that we receive. Okay? So please remember these points as we try to close this lesson, part 1 of lesson 6. First is, everybody is called for priesthood. Second is, Jesus Christ is the eternal high priest. And how did he become the eternal high priest? He became eternal high priest by sacrificing his life on the cross. And how is Jesus a priest? He is a priest because he is a son of God. Okay? Please keep these points in mind. And let us close this lesson with a small prayer. Please rise. Join your hands and close your eyes. Almighty Father, we give you thanks. We praise you. We thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for choosing us to be priests, to be your people. Help us to be blameless and holy 
as you would like us to be. Holy Spirit, help us to be holy. Help us in our priestly functions. Mother Mary, pray for us to your Son, Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you.